Okay, the USDA just approved two companies to sell meat that has been grown in a lab. These companies are Upside Foods and Good Meats. Both have received approval for their quote unquote chicken product. Now, this is a good thing, this is a bad thing. Uh, well, let's take a look at some of the facts here, guys. It's Dr. Sean Baker. What exactly is lab-grown meat? Well, it's meat that has been grown from animal cells, cultured in, in, in many cases, a giant vat, and then treated in various ways to turn the cells into so-called, quote-unquote, meat. Now, uh, it's also called uh, cultured meat, cell-based, or cultivated meat. There are currently 29 different companies trying to bring similar products to market. Now, there is a support for this uh, because of beliefs about you know perhaps less animal cruelty perhaps it's better for the environment the real reason is they want to make a lot of money at this that's you know as you guys probably are aware that's the reason for for most things but anyway these these beliefs around environment and cruelty are they actually true let's take a look at that so how do these cells grow i mean what's keeping them growing well according to the center for food safety a public patent which shows how this lab-grown meat is supposed to be done is, is shown first by taking these sort of oncogenic-like cells or, or similar to cancer cells, cells that continue to grow and grow and grow indefinitely. So these, these cells, you know, cancer cells in general are cells that are problematic because they keep reproducing and they're almost basically immoral. They continue to grow. They don't have signals to turn off growth. Now, this may sound like a perfect thing for lab-grown meat because you just have this unlimited supply of, of, of growing cells. And if you have enough growth factors, uh, which is what which is what's required to stimulate these cells to continue to grow. So you put these excessive growth factors on there to keep things growing and growing. You imagine, you know, uh, as, as, a, as a human being, I can grow a bicep muscle to a certain size over my lifetime. Well, they could take one cell and grow it into something the size of a football field, right? And that's sort of unnatural, as some of you guys might uh, guess. A 2010 article in seminars in pediatric surgery showed that some of these growth factors that are uh, these cells are bathed in uh, can actually enter our bloodstream, you know, if we're exposed to them. And so would this be something that might have untoward effects on us, perhaps uh, promote cancer in us? That, that, that's not been known. We, don't, we, we haven't tested that. As the meat cell cultures can also be created from stem cells, there are additional concerns because stem cells can basically differentiate into a whole variety of things. There's no, no telling for sure what exactly it's going to turn in. Now, the growth, growth factors will direct that. But again, are we smarter than Mother Nature? Do we know everything that differentiates a muscle cell from a cartilage cell, from a fat cell, from a neuron. Mm, I'm not so sure about that, right? I mean, we, we think we do, but we, we, we've, we've made a lot of mistakes in the past. There's a 2017 article in Nature that found that stem cells often will acquire mutations that will promote cancer growth. And current guidelines prohibit selling meat from animals that had a cancer, that basically have known cancer. I mean, that's basically illegal at this point. And so, you know, we're, we're taking these, these stem cells, these proto-oncogenic cells, uh, that can divide forever and ever and potentially maybe selling those. It's also possible that lab meats could be grown by stimulating uh, cell mutations into, to induce something called a pluripotent stem cell, uh, which is like an embryonic stem cell created from any cell. Now, the Good Food Institute wrote that as cells continue to divide and replicate their DNA, the probability of an increased burden of genetic variation also increases. What does that mean? The more it divides over and over again, the more chances for mutations and mutations are certainly associated with cancer. They may not be causative for that, but they certainly have been associated with tumor cells or cancer cells. And so since these cells, these cell cultures don't really have an immune system, there's no surveillance for that. So they have also a high vulnerability to not only these cancer cells, but also to bacterial contamination, viral contamination, fungal ca contamination. Most likely, you may have to require high levels of antibiotic concentrations to keep these things protected. You know, they want to try to do these in clean rooms, but the reality is they're probably going to pr provide antibiotics, antifungals, antivirus uh, medications on there, uh, which, again, does that equal more susceptible, uh, or sorry, uh, disease resistant uh, or antibiotic resistant or antiviral resistant uh, organisms developing perhaps. Uh, the World Health Organization has called emerging antibiotic resistance a global health and developing threat. And it's, it's unclear if this will make it potentially worse. And what about the supposed environmental benefits of this? And so a study from April 23, uh, found that the environmental impact of near-term animal cell-based meat production is likely to be magnitudes higher than average beef production. That is to say, it is much more environmentally unsustainable than just regular meat. So there is basically evidence that it's worse for the environment. So again, the, the sort of instead of this is starting to go away, you know, you're, you're, first you're going to be eating these cells that may have some sort of genetic mutations in them, kind of tumor-like. 
doesn't help the environment. What about what about animal cruelty? That's one thing we can all get behind, right? Don't we don't want animal cruelty? Well, I mean, first of all, first of all, you've got to over and over muscle biopsy these animals. You know, that's you know maybe not the worst thing in the world they go through, but it's it, it causes pain. You know, you have to continue to do this over and over and over again, or you use often something called fetal bovine uh, serum, which requires the slaughter of a pregnant cow and the slaughter of her unborn fetus to, to extract the serum from the blood system. So that is required uh, in many cases. And so uh, it's also well known, as we've described, that these cells will require these growth mediums, these extra growth factors. And where do they come from? They're going to need food, right? And so they're going to need things like soybean hydrosylate to provide amino acids. And where do we get soybean hydrosylate from? Well, you get it from soybeans. And how do you get soybeans? Well, you plant these giant monocrops. And what happens when you plant giant monocrops? Well, you decimate the whole ecosystem. And so, you know, millions, millions, billions, and trillions, and even quadrillions insects, small animals are just slaughtered and wiped out to feed these cells, right? And then, of course, there's dextrose. Where do you get dextrose from? Well, a lot of times you get it from corn. Again, same sort of issue, sugar, things like that. And so, or synthetic amino acids. Again, these are all problems. And then what about the cost of this? And so, one of the most optimistic projections is something like $40 per pound for this stuff, you know? So, the question to you is, would you pay five times, 10 times the normal price to eat something that may have tumor-like properties, is worse for the environment, and continues to contribute to massive ecosystem diversity loss? Um, I know the answer that I have, but I'd, I'd like to see what you guys think. So what do you guys think? Is anybody out there thinking lab-grown meat is the solution that, that we're being told? I mean, billions of dollars have been poured into this, and I think, unfortunately, a lot of the investors are, are having uh, uh, regret, buyer's regret on this stuff, because it's turning out you've been misled about the, the promises of lab-grown meat. It is overly expensive, it is not environmentally sustainable, it's probably not technologically feel feasible on a large scale, it probably does more harm to the environment, and it's very questionable what it does to human health, and it may be a net real negative for us. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.